Did you know that Fallout 76 still lives? And by that I mean it's still getting regular, large game updates. It still has a shockingly stable player count of loyal and seemingly happy players. And I mean, legit, look at that. There's been basically no significant drop off for the player base for years now. That's kind of incredible, and I would not have called that. I expected the player base to dwindle to basically nothing by now. And it's a player base, by the way, that is also surprisingly chill and helpful and non-toxic. Not something you can say of many long-running MMOs or live service type games, which Fallout 76 kind of falls in between those those two types of games, kind of. It's a weird little hybrid of the two, two concepts, sort of. <laughs> so... If you've never played, or haven't played in years and years and are curious as to what the game is these days, hello again, I am Blunty, and I spent the weekend finding out. Yesterday, I put up a video having a bit of a whiffle about the bizarre silence and mystery around the so-called Fallout 4 next-gen update, which most Fallout nerds are expecting Bethesda will release at or near the release of the new Amazon Prime-produced Fallout TV series. I expect if you found your way to this video, that's all the depth we need to go into on that subject for the moment, but... If you did miss yesterday's video, it was basically dissecting how we're a month away from the show now, and there's still nothing but silence from Bethesda on Fallout 4's shiny new coat of paint. Seems pretty weird, right? In any case, as also mentioned in yesterday's video, I've been very patiently waiting for a couple of years now for said big splashy update so I can start a brand new playthrough of Fallout 4 with the game at its very best, in fact the best it'll likely ever be. While I wait though, and because Fallout was now all up inside my thinking meat, on yesterday's live stream over on Twitch I decided to hop back on to Fallout 76 to slake my post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland RPG thirst. With the thought that the TV show might also feed some new, or indeed returning people to Fallout 76 alongside, or even instead of Fallout 4's next-gen update and inherent single-player experience, I kicked up with a fresh new character, just coming in raw. In a manner of speaking. <laughs> I haven't played in something like four years. I've forgotten tremendous amounts about the game as it turns out. Last time I played was the Wastelanders update and that was back in 2020. The third of what will soon be 18 major updates Fallout 76 has had since release. That's right, 18 major updates. I told you they were updating it regularly. But back then, at the time, Wastelanders was considered the first major update because it had some very game-changing stuff. Like, for example, and most notably perhaps, human NPCs, something that was infuriatingly missing from the launch version of the game and made the world feel very dead and dull because the only thing you were talking to were, like, recordings of people. But now they're actual NPCs with, you know, personalities and stories and multiple-choice uh, dialogues and shit like that. I had played about 80 hours of the base Fallout 76 uh, at and after launch. Wasteland has arrived and I quite liked it, but it only held on to me for another 70 or 80 hours-ish. And since then, there have been 14 additional major and named updates, all bringing alterations to the game's systems and new content and all that kind of stuff. And outside of reading their names and perhaps a summary in the Bethesda press releases I get in my email every few weeks, I have basically no idea what they were, what they did to the game, how they were received by the players, or what they changed. There's a new one called America's Playground coming in two weeks. That timing is not an accident, I imagine. And it's a bit controversial as it's replacing, amongst a few other things, I guess, one of the major systems in the game that is tied to rewards and ongoing goals. The season pass kind of stuff, essentially. But I guess a short version of the roughly six hours I spent with that new character yesterday on livestream, Fallout 76 still feels very much like Fallout 76, like mechanically at least. Only there's a lot more of it now, way more quests, way more interesting stuff at locations, new events, a pretty steady feed of things to explore, and a fairly big pile of UI and UX adjustments, quality of life changes, and some pretty big changes to some of the core systems, all of which I'm still kind of scratching at and getting to terms with. But for the most part, my impression is that things have changed for the better, a bit smoother, more fun generally, a little more streamlined but without dumbing things down too much, so you've still got plenty of depth to play with. Something that caught me by surprise yesterday when I was starting my character, you can start at level 20 now. You can just have some sort of preset uh, characters, um, which 
more useful for a secondary character, I think, as there were a few drawbacks I can see for a brand new player jumping in this way. Part of which is the lack of caps. They only start you with 100 caps. If you went from, you know, level 1 to level 20, you'd have a lot more than that. Uh, you also didn't have any weapon mod recipes or anything unlocked. You'd ordinarily uh, sort of gather and unlock a whole bunch of those on your way from level 2 to 20 as well. So if you are new to the game, do ignore the big red best sticker, because um, that, that's not for you. Uh, pick, a, pick a level 2 character and start from there. You'll have a much better learning experience, I imagine. And for new characters and new players in general, there's a special new public storage box now, or boxes really, for high level players to leave gifts in for low level players. Yeah, ammo and armor, weapons, healing items, lockpicks. That used to be an unofficial way the player base did this. We kind of just all agreed in general to, to do it with a certain suitcase at a particular train station. We would just leave our LF leftovers there for new players and sort of guide them there when they when we found them in the world. Uh, but now these donation boxes are all over the game, just built right into the game too. Nice work, devs. Excellent way to listen to the players and respond to what we were already doing and making it better. Very un Bethesda of you, frankly. <laughs> However, speaking of Bethesda things, I was still frequently frustrated. Um, because while it seems the team at Bethesda have been working diligently to serve the players of 76 with a very steady flow of lots of new content and updates in game modes and adventures, very little bug fixing seems to have been going on. I still saw a bunch of UI bugs and, and bits and pieces where just the interface would stop being responsive. Uh, stuff I remember from day one still hasn't been fixed. I had my entire head disappear in the character creation screen. And pathfinding collision and physics is still janky as old hell too. I was attacked by a literal trash mob yesterday on stream too, which... funny. <laughs> Don't kill it! Basically, I still saw all of the jank that has earned this particular developer the semi-affectionate title of Bugthesda. Nothing game-breaking, thankfully, but man, does it jam up the flow of the game, frustrating, just gets in your way, it messes up the feel of the thing, and of course it damages immersion. I was up in the small AMs of this morning, uh, as usual, unable to sleep. Thanks for that, Brain. That's awesome of you. Uh, but I was still feeling kind of fallouty, so I booted up the game again, but this time I revived that long comatose OG character of mine, who had languished in the void at level 73 where I'd left him all those many years ago with Wastelanders. I played for a bunch more hours to see what it felt like to try and revive an old character, because sometimes that really doesn't work very well. I remember when I came back to Cyberpunk after the, I think it was the 1.6 update, the first big major update that fixed basically everything that needed fixing in a major way. Uh, my OG character was completely useless. They had changed so much about the mechanics of the game. My OG character did not work anymore. It was just, just broken beyond repair. I had to start again. But to my surprise, Fallout 76 didn't do that. The build I had all those years ago still worked how I designed it to work. My weapons weren't pointless popcorn makers and very little of the gear and base mechanics and camp stuff that I had were suffering under what I had expected to be some kind of nasty power creep that made everything I had obsolete or broken. That didn't happen. Now, don't get me wrong, my DPS, for example, in multiplayer events pales in comparison to the triple-digit leveled endgame min-maxed builds and endlessly farmed three-star perfect roll legendary weapons that the long-timers have had all these years to refine. But I was able to hold my own just fine. I wasn't getting stomped by the enemies. I was able to contribute in meaningful ways to the battles and, you know, defenses and events and whatnot. And a lot of that is down to some changes in how scaling works in the game. When the game first launched, different map areas had their own level ranges, so if you were a level 12 character, stay the hell out of the level 40 area because you would get liquefied instantly. All that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, when Wastelanders came around, they made local level scaling work on whatever player was there first. So, so if a level 12 entered an area alone or with fellow low levels, that's what the enemies were in that area. And if a level 40 player came along, they were fighting level 12 enemies. And the reverse is true. If the level 12 followed a level 40 player into an area uh, where the level 40 player was first, all the enemies in the local area were level 40 appropriate. And you'd get smushed again. At least, I'm pretty sure that's how it used to work. Feel free to correct me. I'm, I'm working on a bit of a soft memory of that particular mechanic. I might be slightly confused on it, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure someone will correct me if I get it wrong. But these days, leveling seems 
um, instanced, basically. Every player is presented with level-appropriate stuff wherever they are, whoever they're with. With my fresh character yesterday, I was being shadowed around uh, in a team with a long-time stream viewer who had um, a level 60 character, if I remember correctly, or thereabouts. Um, and each of us were fighting the exact same enemies in the exact same places, but they were all appropriately level-scaled for each of us separately. So they were fighting level 60 appropriate enemies, I was fighting level 20 appropriate enemies. It was seamless and very, very effective. In fact, to drive that point home, I actually had to revive them a few times because they were getting stomped by their much more difficult enemies as I was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with appropriately scaled enemies for me. What a great system to make sure multiplayer is always fun and fair. All multiplayer games should do it this way. And you know what, guys? I think Fallout 76 might have caught me back for a little while at least, because I'm having fun again. I keep thinking about playing the game, just soaking into the wonderful map, because that's one of the best things about 76. The map is excellent. Say what you will about the rest of the game. The map is a fantastic place just to be and explore and whatnot. Um, so I've, I've just been sort of poking around at side missions and daily quests and doing some of the new quests that have been added since I, uh, you know, left the game behind, participating in multiplayer events and whatnot. It's a long way from a properly superb game and certainly not one of the best the Fallout franchise has to offer, but its semi-MMO, online-only, multiplayer nature does give it something unique to offer Fallout fans and newly curious people coming, uh, you know, from the show who might not ordinarily be the type of gamer uh, traditionally interested or attracted to, uh, uh, you know, a 60 to 80 hour long single player RPG like the other Fallout games can be. Maybe they're a younger player. Maybe they grew up playing multiplayer games as many young people have. Maybe that's what they're more used to. Maybe that's what they're more interested in and there's Fallout 76 for them. To my honest and great shock, I consider Fallout 76 absolutely still worth a go. I went into it yesterday expecting it to be a bit of a disaster and, and you know, hilarious disaster we could all have a chuckle at. <laughs> but no, it's genuinely fun still. Especially considering the very chill and very helpful, small but steady and very dedicated player base it's managed to hold on to. Well done, Fallout 76 veterans. You are doing gamers proud. You are an example to us all of how to be a community. Nice work, guys. May you continue, and may I contribute, to uh, helping returning players and newbies feel welcome. Oh, and if any of you have a, a spare, like, three-star legendary fixer um, available for a stealth build type character, um, um, hit, 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 hit me up, I'm having a bit of a trouble <laughs> tracking one down. <laughs> Don't have enough caps to buy any from the camps. <sighs> Thanks for watching, I am Bloody, and I will catch you next time.